From July 26th to August 11th, 2024, Paris is going to play host to the Olympic Games for the first time in 100 years. Now, there's been an awful lot of news about these Olympic Games and also, of course, the Paralympics, which will be followed straight after. But just the fact that there's been a lot of news about it and the fact that it's still quite a way away means I don't really want to get into uh, too much of the detail that you can easily read elsewhere. For example, I know there's been a lot of talk about swimming in the Seine uh, for the triathletes. For example, there's been a lot of talk about uh, how Paris is going to handle having uh, so many millions, I think, uh, of tourists coming in. The fact that uh, the cost of the games, 8.3 billion euros, how that's going to change the face of the city. There's been a lot said about that. So for this episode of the Earful Tower, I wanted to focus a little bit on the perspective from the ground. We're still quite a few months out, so it's all still quite, uh, it's quite new for us all. So I thought I'd get some different perspectives. So in this episode, you're going to hear from Denise Campbell Bauer who is the American ambassador to France and Monaco. And then you're also going to hear from myself, Oliver G, a podcaster in Paris, and from Tom Clark, a friend of the show, who runs the Coutume coffee shop, uh, several cafes around Paris, for the perspective of a small business owner and also uh, a sports fan. So that is what we're in for in the next half an hour. My name is Oliver G., this is the Eiffel Tower podcast, AB season, and O is for Olympics. Here comes some music from Press Maxon. Okay, so we'll explain that music at the end of the episode this time. Thank you very much, Press. And we're going to start with an interview with the American ambassador. A note on uh, why, really, is because, firstly, I thought it would be a good chance to talk to the American ambassador, have a chat, get her on the podcast, become friends. She could be a friend of the Eiffel Tower, perhaps. And also, I know that an awful lot of Americans, firstly listen to this podcast, but secondly, we'll be coming to Paris for the Olympics. So I figured I'd get that perspective on it uh, and also talk to uh, the ambassador a little bit about herself, introduce herself, give her a chance to talk about Paris, the connection between uh, France and the US, and then of course the Olympics. So a little bit of behind the scenes, I recorded this inside the embassy, which is right on the Concorde by the uh, Crillon Hotel. Lovely, lovely embassy. And uh, gosh, they have a really official press room there, which is where we sat and recorded this in front of an American flag and a French flag with the hot lights overhead, the the big camera lights shining down on us. And uh, here is what happened. My name is Denise Campbell Bauer, and I am the United States Ambassador to France and Monaco. And welcome to the Earful Tower podcast. Lovely to meet you again. How are you doing? I am doing very well, and it's lovely to meet you too again. We Um, keep running into each other. So at the American Cathedral, at the the lovely residential uh, premises, what do we call it, the residence? The residence, yeah. And now here in the the embassy itself... uh, Seems that we just keep bumping into each other. And how do we? Uh, how do the typical a typical layman like me? How am I as an Australian in Paris? How do I address you? Well, as you wish, um, it's generally recommended, Madam Ambassador, okay, or Madam Ambassadrice, or Ma'am. Ma'am, okay. Well, we've got three options then as we go through this interview. And um, there'll be a lot of people, I'm sure, a lot of Americans that listen to this show, who are thinking, um, I don't know this woman. Who is she? What's her story? I wonder if we can get to know you a little bit before we talk about the Olympics. I read your, the page on the uh, embassy site 
I know that you have a dog called Daisy. I know that you've got an Australian connection. Are those two、uh, big parts of who you are? Those are two big parts of who I am.、Um, I think at, at my core, I'm a public servant.、Um, I grew up in California. My family is all in farming and education, are the two main careers. And、um, we have a lovely dog here named Daisy. I have been a fan of France since I arrived. As part of an academic study tour when I was 15. Let's touch on that for a second. Okay, so when you were 15, you came to Paris, was it? I, I, I came to Paris.、Um, I was, again, a small town in California, and my first trip abroad, really my first trip much of anywhere, and absolutely fell in love with France. And I've been back many, many times since, and now have the privilege to serve in this important role. That's awesome. And I think there's a lot of people listening who can relate to that kind of、um, lightning strike of Paris or France, just hitting them, being like, well, I'm, France is like, I'm not letting go of you. You're coming back. This is your special place. Is that how you feel? Do you have lots of special places around the world, or is it Paris that. Well, France is, is obviously, I love my home country, the United States, but if I'm ever looking to go somewhere, it's always been to France. And I, I think I'm very lucky to have a very nice husband who has accommodated that wish many, many times.、Um, and one thing I think, especially as ambassador now that I've seen, Paris always has something new around the corner, as, as, you, as you know well, right? It's like things are changing. As much as it's history and it's beautiful and all the culture that we all appreciate, there's always something new too. But all of France is like that. And so, one of the things that we try to do here at the embassy is get out all over the country and really appreciate all the differences. A、uh, big fan of doing the same. In fact, spoiler alert, upcoming episode isn't about Paris at all. P is for something else. Ooh, can't wait. <laughs> can't tell either. I can't tell. That's classified for me. But, Tom,、um, interestingly, what you just said about there's like so much on offer, new things are happening, that brings us into the Olympics. But also, I find the same with ancient history in Paris. Like you can discover or learn something, like suddenly you go on a Tangent, find something old, and you're like, hang on, this is interesting. This city, this city, this country can offer things in the future and the past. And you said from California, weirdly, there are more listeners in California than in any other country to this podcast. So there's more Californians than Australians、wow. listening. What is it with Californians, especially, and Americans with this connection? Is it the old stuff? Is it the new stuff? Why is there this connection? Is it film? Why do Americans go crazy for Paris?、Hmm. Well, you know, it's hard for me to speak for all Americans. You can try. <laughs> I think I can speak for myself、um, and probably for my, my friends. There's obviously a huge connection just based upon values, right? France was our first ally ever. For the United States. We had the bond through、um, World War II. As you probably know, this is going to be the 80th anniversary of the liberation this next year. So there's, there's this deep historic bond. And for me, I mean, it is, it's just always an interesting place to go. And as you noted, there's something new that you discover, even if you've walked down the street a bunch of times, every now and then.、Um, We love to just walk in, in Paris, my husband and I,、um, and be flaneurs, as they say. And every now and then, you know, we'll just read a plaque and、uh, that's just on a wall. And it's like, oh, that's some really interesting new piece of history that I didn't know anything about. Or go to a new museum. There are so many museums here. They're obviously all the really famous ones. But there are so many small museums that are really, really interesting. And,、um, you know, you can learn something new or be inspired in a new way. A new, there's a new rabbit hole on every single corner. That's Paris. So true. That should be the motto. I'll send that to somebody. <laughs> But it's like, I agree. Like, you get the Louvre out of the way on your first trip, Musee d'Orsay, and then you just focus on the small、yeah. ones and you can keep going forever.、Yeah. Let's talk about the Olympics.、Um, you're going to be, the plan is you'll be the ambassador here during the Olympics. That's a big.、Uh, Undertaking. I imagine a lot of Americans will be coming here. This is, is this an important time、uh, of the year, or is this like as big as it gets, or is it just swept under the rug like、uh, other events? How, how, how important is this? Well, I, I think the Olympics are huge, right? It's, it's、um, such an inspiring thing to be part of and to get to witness both the Olympics and the Paralympics.、Um, I actually know some Paralympians who are competing.、Um, so I think it's 
it's incredibly inspiring. And we do expect to have a lot of Americans come. Obviously, the athletes, their families, spectators, all the support staff. Um, For us, it is, of course, incredibly inspiring, but it's also a really important responsibility because more than anything else, we're responsible for the safety of American citizens while they're in France. So the one thing I would say just to to be um, a little bureaucratic or a little precise with you is that we really do encourage people to go online in advance of traveling to France for the Olympics or for anything. And we encourage this worldwide. I encourage my friends to do it, even though obviously they can call me. Um, And that's to go to travel.state.gov. And if you go there, you can sign up for alerts and you'll get to know what the latest is in the country, wherever you are in the world. And also, if there was an emergency, we would have a way to reach out to you. So I would encourage your many listeners to to do that. And hopefully, you know, to come. And if you don't come for the Olympics, come another time, because it's always great. The doors are open. But that, so that website applies for not just the Olympics, that's whenever you're coming to Paris to keep an eye on that. So I would suggest Anytime anyone is traveling internationally, if you just go to travel.state.gov, you can select your country and it will you can sign up for alerts and it will give you information about the security situation. It's really worth doing and again, it's something that I encourage my family to do. Perfect. We got the website in there twice. That's awesome. perfect. That's perfect. <laughs> on, on a personal note, like where your embassy is outside, there's events all the time. I mean, just as I came into Concord, I saw they're setting up for something. Probably maybe the rugby is over there at the moment. Yeah. There's always something happening. Yep. On a personal note, um, are you looking forward to the Olympics yourself? Like, is this something that you care about? Is it, is it going to keep you busy? Are you, uh, you know, how does it feel to be the ambassador during a time like this? Um, I am looking forward to it, and we have a team here that's already working on planning and coordinating closely with everyone in France and with the Olympic Committee. I think it'll be a fabulous time. It's it's so inspiring um, to to see the athletes who've worked so so hard, um, and you know we all have our favorite sports here and there. So there will be some that I watch even more closely than others. I'm going to put you on the spot. You said you have favorite sports. Are you allowed to share them with me or is this classified information? I don't think that one's classified. I um, I used to ride horses, so anything equestrian always okay. And as I understand me. for the Olympics, they're going to be, they're not trying to build too many new things. So I assume that that will be out maybe like Bois de Boulogne area where they've already got race courses. I, I believe it's going to be in Versailles. Even better. Wow. Okay. There's some. There's something to keep an eye out for. Okay. Um, I will wish you all the best uh, as ambassador to France during the Olympics. And thank I'll you. say thank you very much for your time on the Eiffel Tower. Thank you. And à bientôt. À bientôt, j'espère. <laughs> thank you very much, ma'am. For your time appreciated and uh, hope to have you on the show again soon now uh, there's one look at the olympics let's take a different angle on this my personal thoughts a lot of people like on the ground here a lot of people talk about uh, whether they're going to stay in the city for the olympics uh, there's sort of two minds about it a lot of the people like a lot of the friends that i got work in hospitality or tourism and There's this sort of push-pull thing going on, knowing that obviously there's going to be a lot of work, knowing that it's going to be really fun uh, to stay in the Olympics, at least whenever anything big happens, it's usually pretty fun. Uh, But also the the push-and-pull bit, knowing that uh, people knowing they can rent out their apartment for five times the price that it's worth, it's kind of sick really to think about it, but I can understand that people are torn about it. Do you stay or do you go? Who knows? What am I going to do? I anticipate that I'll stay here. I'd love to go and see some sports and of course, uh, yeah, make some hay while the sun is shining. Maybe do some tours in the morning for all these people coming to Paris. Although, as I said, it's not until July and August, so we've got lots of time to figure it out. Um, Also, I've been talking to friends, talking to friends about what we want to see, what we want to do, if we're going to stay. And I thought, why not talk to a friend of the show, Tom Clark. So uh, he was way back, third episode of The Eiffel Tower. If you're not familiar, he's an Australian. 
He runs Kutum, which is one of the most popular and successful uh, coffee shops in the city. And I met him out the front of the flagship store, the flagship coffee shop in the 7th arrondissement, Rue Babylon. And uh, we had a little chat about the Summer Olympics. Here's what happened. So I'm standing uh, at Ketum on Rue Babylon. Babylon? Babylon, Babylon with uh, Tom Clark, the owner, and uh, the best coffee maker there. No. Appreciate it. Yeah, we do a good job. For you, personally. I've uh, surpassed, uh, my team has surpassed me. Yeah, okay. So, uh, <laughs> so I, wanted to talk to you as a, I wanted to talk to you as a business owner in Paris, mm-hmm. also as a man in Paris and a friend of the show, mm-hmm. about uh, the Olympic Games and how it's affecting already business, or if not at all. How is Katoum and its restaurants and uh, brûlerie, what do we call mm-hmm. that? Roasters? Roastery. How is that going to be affected? Well, we're all excited. I think uh, all uh, restaurants, cafes, uh, business owners inside of Paris are really excited about, first of all, the, the festivities, the, the various nationalities that will be coming through, the ambience, which we're expecting is going to be you know, lots of fun and a real positive experience for us all. I think we all need a, something to look forward to because it's been a couple of years of you know, hard grafting with COVID and, and the rest of it. So we're really anticipating it. Uh, there are some practical issues that we're considering and we're asking for some um, clarification about how we'll be able to get deliveries uh, some of our uh, some of our coffees for example they come in through semi-trailer uh, of course we can adjust we have a big fleet of cargo bikes and we can adapt uh, some of our deliveries but there is a, a question of how we'll get our cafes and our clients uh, delivered with coffee and espresso machines and so mm, forth the logistics the the logistics yeah. that it hasn't been very clear on the uh mairie de paris side but uh it's you know still a year away more or less so we uh we have time to work it out mm. and um we're all yeah pumped we can't wait to have uh, millions of people come through we just hope that parisians also stay around because we've heard that a lot of uh, people will be looking to leave to either rent out their um, flats and you know go to the country house or even travel abroad uh so yeah it's just a question will we have a huge influx of uh, fans uh, on top of the parisian community community or will they more or less you know annul each other and replace the the locals that's an interesting thought and how about you as a Parisian man, I mean, you're, you sound Australian. Adopted Parisian, yeah. yeah. Are you thinking to stay around? Absolutely. I think you only live, you know, I've gone through one Olympics in Sydney back in 2000. Are you living there? No, I was uh, in Canberra, the, <laughs> okay. the intelligent, you know, state capital. Uh, but I went up to many games and saw, you know, volleyball and basketball. I saw, athletics. you know, I saw, I was living in Sydney then. Really? I was at a, what, who did you see? Uh, Australia I saw versus Australia somebody, well. I can't remember no who. Hello, Barbara. <laughs> Bonjour, <Hello>. Barbara. <laughs> Mon ami Oliver. Uh, look at you. Uh, yeah. So, um, cool. So, you're going to go check out some of the games as Absolutely. well? Absolutely. Have you got tickets or are you going to work on I'll be working on that. I yeah. always kind of fly by the seam of my pants, yeah. but I'll, I'll work it out. Can't wait to, yeah, see some Australian, uh, you know, uh, teams play. Obviously, France. I'm an adopted French citizen. And just generally enjoy the, you know, the jubilation of, you know, the world's uh, congregation. And I love sport, as you know. Mm-hmm. Keen basketball player. Well, have you heard about the American basketball team? Uh, I have heard that LeBron's done a, a shout-out, <laughs> wanting to, uh, you know, reassemble a veritable dream team. Yeah. So I'd be pumped to see that. Here's a question, and you don't have to answer honestly. You can tell me the truth mm-hmm. off, off air. <laughs> if LeBron James and the rest of the mm. new dream team walk into Katoom, yep. will you call me? Absolutely. You, of course. Really? No, I mean now, immediately. Or would you wait until they're gone? No, I would call you okay, straight good, away. Good, Come good, on, good, on. We're good friends. I mean. <laughs> um, okay, cool. And then uh, I know that you're a businessman. You're good with numbers. Uh, do you think all these people renting out their place on Airbnb, mm-hmm. is this a disaster? 
for Anyone, well, everyone, I don't know. I think um, economically it can make sense, even if it's very uh, legislated today. You can only rent out 128 days a year, I believe, without having to get a, a special license. Uh, they're even doing apparently um, control uh, checking that people are respecting that, and there have been some fines issued. Uh, I would say, I mean, if, if that's your, you know, if you, you, if you run that as a business, go for it. But if you're a homeowner and you're a Parisian, I would recommend staying around. That's my intuition. Enjoy it. It's once in your life. Uh, yeah, there's you know a little bit of anxiety about what's going to happen. Uh, we do have some you know practical questions still, but I always find the French, you know, they, uh, as we say in French, you know, se se démerde. They they get by. They work it out. Uh, they've pulled off some incredible uh, you know events, fashion weeks, uh, you name it, huge uh, gastronomy festivals. I would put a vote of confidence into France pulling off really amazing Olympics. And uh, lastly, I know you, I know you've got a cafe to run behind me here, but um, the seventh at this month, mm-hmm. where yeah, this cafe is, I know you've got lots of cafes, but this one's in the seventh. Mm-hmm. There's going to be loads of events around here. Oh yeah, um, with the Invalide, I believe, and a couple of other beach volleyball under yeah. the Eiffel Tower. Oh. Incredible! It's a, oh, there was the idea to have the uh, Seine as the uh, the swimming uh, it location. Still is. It's it still, still is. Idea. Yeah, I, okay. don't know if they, I don't know how they're going with it, but yeah, no, it's going to be an incredible part of Paris to be. And I love the seventh. If uh, the listeners out there haven't been, come by. It's really one of those typical Parisian suburbs where you have just you know amazing monuments. You have big leafy mo- uh, avenues good cafe or two and uh, a really just uh, authentic Parisian experience and I'll finish with a shout out to your cafe because that's only fair I think uh, I've always said, I've said since the you were the third ever episode mm-hmm. uh, of the Eiffel Tower I, I still remember yeah. Yeah. <laughs> back in the community radio days yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and even even since then I've been saying uh, best coffee in Paris uh, I appreciate Kutum. that but now I want to ask have you got anything new a new Katoom that we can go check out for mm. people who've been here done that want to try something different oh yeah different? we've opened a bunch of since we've um, you know done the last episode uh, I would recommend uh, we have a really cool uh, cafe inside of a hotel just uh, in the 8th arrondissement not too far from the Champs Elysees. it's called Hotel Matisse M-A-T-H-I-S you actually have uh, for the guys out there you have a, a barber shop on the left hotel lobby and then uh, Kutchum on the right so you can go get your beard trimmed I'm obviously not concerned by that genetically <laughs> uh, <laughs> but you can in theory uh, it's an amazing really beautiful architectural concept it's a small but really uh, stellar design uh, we also have a couple of other spaces like Galerie Lafayette underneath the uh, historic dome is incredible mm. uh, I think it needs to be seen uh, we've got a bunch Faubourg Poissonnier in a really foodie district of Paris okay that's three anyway, that's, that's, that's well, I want it one day uh, soon hopefully I want to do an episode with you where we go back and we both listen to that first one we did Absolutely. six years ago and then sort of... Uh, you can try and trip me up again with a blind tasting? Yeah. All right, let's okay, do it. Good. Well, thanks for your uh, time, Tom, from Kutu. Pleasure as Cafe. always. So there you have it, Tom Clark from Kutu. And uh, now's a good chance, I think, to talk about the music that we've just been hearing throughout this episode from Press Maxon, who's been doing the music related to each theme that I've been choosing for this A-B season. By the way, if you're new to the podcast, uh, this season I'm doing the A to Z of, uh, of Paris and France. And so we're up to O, we're more than halfway through the alphabet, O for Olympics. And this is what Press had to say about the song that you've been hearing. For this week's O episode, I needed to find music that reflected the spirit of togetherness and something I could imagine being cranked in a stadium. So, may I present to you, the O is for Olympics Mashup. It's a blend of rock and Latin music. We start with a nod to the football anthem Magic in the Air by Magic System featuring Chalky. Then move into Tous Ensemble by Johnny Halliday. I know, I know, two football songs, but the spirit of celebration is in both. So to close it out, we end on the main theme from Olympic Fanfare by the incredible John Williams. I turned the volume up on my electric guitars for this recording, which sure is fun once in a while. Enjoy. Thank you very much, Press Maxon. Uh, he's a very active Earful Tower follower as well, so you'll probably see his name pop up on Facebook and Instagram. And uh, I highly encourage you to follow him. See what he is up to. Press Maxon, M-A-X-S-O-N. As for me, I want to say a big thank you to all the Patreon supporters. Patreon.com slash The Earful Tower. If you're in town this month in October, 
there's going to be an event on the 19th at a secret location in the 12th arrondissement. I think there are still a few places left, although they went really quickly, these places. Check it out. Uh, if you're not going to be here October 19th, we do lots of events. You get the guide to Paris, my PDF guide to Paris, on sign up and a whole heap of extra bonuses. Otherwise, consider doing one of our walking tours, theearfultower.com slash tours. I'd be mad to say that there are any better tours in the city. And recently, I've been leading them personally on Monday mornings in the Marais. But we have guides who can do everything. The Louvre, the Marais, of course, and Montmartre. And lately, we've been doing a food tour of the 12th arrondissement too. Get in touch or just check it out on the website or send me an email. To repeat, theeiffeltower.com slash tours if you want to book a walking tour and patreon.com slash theeiffeltower if you want to become a member. Come and join the gang. As for me, I'm going to start recording the episode for P next week. I'll give you a little bit of a clue. We, I mean, the obvious one, of course, would be Paris, but we're not going obvious here. In fact, for this episode, we're leaving Paris again. So we'll be somewhere in this magnificent country and we're going to take you with us. I'll be back again next week to share that with you. Thanks for listening. Merci and au revoir.